This is my example video about what we're going to do for environmental wins on every Friday after recycling. Since I couldn't be there with you guys today, I decided to record mine so you can kind of have an idea of what I'm looking for when you guys do these every week. Yours will be with a partner and I really have no, you can pick anything, really anything that you think deserves attention because it's a win for the environment, something that'll make us smile. So mine today is on Ber Berardius minimus, and this is a new beaked whale species that was just found, just found in Japan. So in order to really understand why this is a win, we have to talk about the bad stuff, unfortunately, because we haven't gotten there in our class yet. So one of the things I've kind of become passionate about as I've gotten older is I follow the Taiji Japan dolphin hunts. So every year Taiji, is this little cove in Japan and they send out hunters and they go off in boats called banger boats. These boats have uh, long poles that dive into the earth that kind of extend off the boat into the ocean and they make really loud kind of obnoxious noises. And once they find a pot of dolphins, the hunters start banging these poles together and they can kind of like a, like a sheepdog, drive the pod where they want them to go, as long as they have multiple boats. So every year they do this hunt and it starts on September 1st and it goes all the way until March 1st. And on your screen, there's a kind of graphic picture so that you can see that not only are they captured for aquariums, the pretty ones, but they're also slaughtered and consumed for their meat. But if you look on the right, you'll see the totals for last year. So in the 2018-2019 season, there's over 2,000 dolphins that were captured or slaughtered. If you look at the numbers, it really, I mean, if you, we call a spade a spade, the prettier dolphins are the ones that they go after more. So that's because it's worth more. Most of the bottlenose dolphins and the striped dolphins aren't actually taken in for consumption. They're captured to be trained so that they can go to aquariums and be sold. And they get sold for thousands and thousands of dollars to different aquariums around the world. And then you have kind of towards the bottom, the different types of dolphins and cetaceans, blah, cetaceans that are maybe not as quote unquote pretty, but they would suffice for their meat. The other thing we have to talk about before we get to the win is whaling in Japan. So commercial whaling was banned in 1986 by the IWC, but unfortunately it's kind of complicated because waters, so the way the ocean waters work and why pirates exist is because the water surrounding a country is owned by that country. But then once you get out into the middle, you're kind of in uncharted territory that's not owned by anyone. And that's when there's worldwide um, authorities who take care of those places. But Japan is sneaky enough that they only hunt in their waters or in Antarctic waters. And obviously nobody resides in Antarctica, so they can't, sorry, my cat is very curious. They can't really control no one else can really control what they're hunting because they're in their own waters or waters that aren't owned by anybody. But they kind of masquerade this business and call it research, but they actually do sell the blubber and the meat of these whales for consumption in Japan. And it's not just a Japan, I'm not purposely targeting Japan. It's just kind of the most well-known one and the one we have the most data on. Uh, countries in uh, like Norway and Finland also do whaling and legally because they also consume whale meat. So it's not just Japan, but they're kind of the easiest example to talk about. And the most relevant because this new whale was found in Japan. So I picked this little gift from Jurassic Park because life has still found a way. Even though all these thousands and thousands of dolphins are hunt every year and hundreds of whales are hunted every year we still in 2019 are finding new species and i think that's completely a win so berardius minimus is a very long deep diving 
whale. It's pretty small, six to seven meters. Its other um, relatives are a lot larger than that. And literally this kind of, I just saw the first article last week that this species was discovered. There was reports of a new species, but no one had actually captured one to classify it. So one of the reasons why I might have been able to keep this low profile is that it prefers these really cold, really deep ocean waters. And because it has such a good dive capacity, it could go for a very long time without being seen on the surface. And there's not a ton of information on the description yet, but I put some kind of um, graphics to help show size. So there's only two other beaked whales and beaked whales means that it has bones up in the jaw like a dolphin. And if you kind of look on the right side graphic, blue whales are obviously huge at 33 meters. The biggest beaked whale is the Baird's beaked whale, which is at 12 meters. And this one's about half that size, so six to seven meters, which is pretty small. And you can see in the graphic below. And it's, I think, really, really awesome that even in the 21st century, we can still find new life. And there's so many different places in the world we haven't discovered yet that are untouched, like, well, not completely untouched, but nearly untouched, like the deep ocean where all these different um, organisms are thriving and existing without any interruption by us. And hopefully the discovery of this new species doesn't mean it'll be hunted. Um, They'll have to do some studies and find out how many they think there are. They'll have to figure out one day, is it, where has it evolved from? Is it a newly evolved species? And there's just so many cool opportunities now for research and to know more about the species that I think is awesome. So that's my little presentation. I did include a citation page, which I would um, like you to do also. I am not sure right now because I'm still casting my screen, but I have not hopefully talked over about five minutes, which is what I would want you guys to do in your presentations. It's really important to make sure that you both speak because um, I'm going to give you both a grade. So if you don't talk, I can't grade you. I will show you the rubric ahead of time. I'll post it on Classroom so you can kind of look at what I look for during presentations. It's all about mannerisms and information and kind of presentation skills. Not as much, not really not going to be picky about where your information is coming from and what topic you pick, but how you present it to us. Um, if you have any questions, people who are going next week, let me know. And I'll see you guys on Monday.